You would think after all this time, I would have this stuff figured out. Not true. Not even remotely true. Okay, people, I want to do a film about rebuilding my Shifter Media site. And I'm sure there's people out there going, what are you talking about? Yeah, so I have a website, shifter.media, not .com. It's shifter.media because I'm clever. And it's Shifter because I don't know where I'm going in the future, and I could shift a million times between now and the end of time. And so I thought, that's a pretty good title. And then media, yeah, probably I'm going to be involved in media in some sort for the rest of my life. And so hence the name Shifter Media. Now, I've had this site for a long time. This is the reincarnation of a site that was called Smog Ranch for a for since 2002 to about 2014 15 16 I wrote under a site called Smog Ranch. Smog Ranch was an homage to a American naturalist photographer crazy named Peter Beard who uh, was from the East Coast, went to Yale, ended up in East Africa in the late 1950s, befriended Karen Blixen, and proceeded to live in Africa for most of his life, and did a multitude of books that are absolutely fantastic, and also a multitude of artwork and journals that are unique to the world. He died last year, the year before, sadly. And he lived in a place in Africa called Hog Ranch. And he made a dramatic impact on my life. And when I moved to Los Angeles, what probably the single smoggiest city I've lived in, I thought, let's pay homage to Beard and I'll be Smog Ranch instead of Hog Ranch. That's how the site began. I wrote under that name for a decade and a half. And uh, I had started doing interviews, which you'll see also see on my site under a title called Dispatches. These are long form audio interviews with creatives. And I had done about 70 of these, seven zero. When someone at Blurb said to me, hey, um, have you ever thought about interviewing creatives? And I was like, yeah, I've thought about it. And in fact, I've done it 70 times. And so Blurb was starting to begin to like think about using some of this content. And someone approached me at Blurb and said, look, man, you're doing all this stuff, but nobody knows you're doing it. And if they don't know you're doing it, it's going to look like you're not doing anything. So you may want to figure out a way to put this stuff out on your own. And two weeks later, Shifter went live. And so that's how the site began. Now, this is a critical point, part of this entire film. There's two things that are absolutely essential for you to understand. The logistics and hoops I'm going to jump through with the site is one thing, but there's two things underneath it. And I think I wrote them at opposite ends of this. The reason I'm doing this and rebuilding the site is not about me. I don't have a stake in the game. I have no interest in being a photographer. I have no interest in being known. I'm not trying to build a big community. I blog because in essence, I've been blogging my entire life. I've been blogging since elementary school. I just happened to do it in a printed book. And when the blog came out, I started, I added it in digital and print. And I just started sharing stuff. I've never made an, an attempt to market my site. I've never monetized it. I turned down every brand that approaches me. I turned down every single guest post. I've done everything that famous bloggers have told me not to do, which is have 10 different tabs at the top and write about 10 different things. They all like, nope, you got to do one thing. You can only write about photography. You have to do photography. That's all you can talk about. And I'm like, I'm never going to do that. That's would bore the living hell out of me. I, need, I want this to be about my philosophy, my life, the circles I'm in, and also just a way for me to show you things that you may not see or know about. And that's really it. So I'm not trying to get famous here. That actually makes what I'm doing a lot more difficult. Because everybody says to me, what are you selling? What are you selling? And I'm like, I'm not selling anything. I don't have presets. I don't have t-shirts. I don't have classes I'm selling you know, occasionally once a year, like Albania is coming up. Yes, I can technically try to educate people about the workshop and hopefully they come. But it's a weird thing to not be in the position that most other people are. And the reason I'm doing this, so I, well, number one is I don't have a stake in this. Number two is the reason I'm doing it is more and more and more people, two yesterday, three today alone, have reached out to me and said, I don't want to be on Facebook. I don't want to use Instagram ever again. These platforms do not make me happy. They are not helpful to me. They feel like they're making my life worse, but I feel like I'm trapped in a quote, necessary evil that I'm stuck and that half of my friends tell me, you know, yeah, Instagram's horrible for me and I hate it and I'm spending all this time and it makes me feel terrible, but I have to, because that's the only way to do this. 
couple couple of days ago, I was having a conversation with someone else, and they said, "Well, you know, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do this, but the only only way I can do this is if I do the work I want and then I put it on social media." That is not true. That is total bullshit. And people have been biting into this facade, this lie for decades now. And that is why these platforms have, are brilliant. They have such a hold on us mentally and physically. That's what they're skating on. The truth is, if you don't wanna use them, don't. But the last thing I'm gonna say before I get into the logistics of this, and this is as equally as important as me saying I don't have a stake in this game. You, if I could all cap this, if I could reach through this camera, and grab you by the lapels in a loving way. Not, not in an airplane where the guy's got the wrench and someone has a bat and they're all in line to beat up the person who's hysterical. Not in that way. I'm talking about reaching in through love and shaking you by the lapels. You better have something to say. If your MO up until this point is copy what you've seen on Instagram, or copy some other somebody else's street photography that's not interesting or unique, that looks like everything else that's ever done. And now you're sitting around and saying, why do I not have more recognition? Why do I not have more accolades? Why do I not have more followers? This will not work. There is absolutely no reason for you to go forth with this because unless you have something to say, unless you have figured out a way of telling stories that makes that is of interest to people, forget it. You haven't done the homework. So if you're gonna build, so you eliminate Facebook, you eliminate Instagram, what you're left with is the internet, the web, websites. I know, when social came, here are the websites, social came and it went just like this and then everybody forgot about all this. I'm saying, I don't wanna do this. I deleted my Facebook and Instagram years ago. The best thing I've ever done. And all of a sudden, my website came up. But again, am I selling myself? No. Am I marketing it? No. Do I tell a lot of people about it? No. Do I sell anything on the site? No, nothing. I did it for fun. And because it's fun and because it's so integral to my life, it doesn't feel like a chore. I don't feel a responsibility to engage with you when people, I answer every comment on YouTube and I answer every comment on my website. And it is slow and clunky and awful. Both of those interfaces are terrible, which I will come to in a minute. I heard another person, a blogger, writer, photographer person who I really like mentioned this a couple of weeks ago and it really was like nails on a chalkboard to me. They mentioned something about the responsibility of dealing with their readership. That tells me that this person at some point is gonna jettison the whole thing because what it tells me is this person is milking their audience and wants to take the benefits of that milking but doesn't wanna put the time in on the day-to-day, -day, the boring stuff. For this person, it's gonna be boring. For me, I love, when I see people's names in the comment on my site, some of them I've met in person over the years, but others, I've seen their avatars, I've seen them for years. I feel like I actually know them. When I travel, and when I used to travel all the time for Blurb, readers of the blog would come to meet me from all over the place. That was one of the best things, was like, oh my God, I've seen this person's name on my comment list for decades. And now all of a sudden I show up in London or I show up in Victoria in Canada, boom, these people show up. And I'm like, that's the really cool thing about building a community. You are building one real person at a time. Not like Twitter, not like Instagram, not like Facebook, bots, strangers, people you don't know, people are buying, boosting their following. That's another name for buying followers and it's fake and phony and awful and stupid. And we all know it and most of us play along. This is different. This is one at a time. And if you don't have patience and you haven't figured out what it is you're trying to say, then don't bother even trying to do this because you can't force it. And if you're fake and phony on your own website, people smell it out in a second and they will boot you and abandon you. So let's get started here. The site. Okay, there, number one is there is a basic site redesign that will happen. This is not going to happen in the next week or two weeks. It's, uh, there's two people working on the backside, Fleming and Charlene, who are my longtime friends who are both really talented photographers and they're also nice enough to help me with this because I'm clueless, as you would imagine, when it comes to anything technologically related. I don't know how to code. I don't know any of this stuff. So they're gonna help and they're good. And the reason Shifter looks like it does now and how good it is and how it's been built up is because of those two. So that's gonna help. Basic design change, not entirely sure what that is yet, but it's coming. My The one word I've mentioned to both of them as we lean forward into this, the one word to keep in mind is simple. Simplify, 
simple. Simplify, simple. That's it. If ever in doubt, simplify. So I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to put some things under a drop down menu. I'm going to eliminate some of the categories and blend them all into one. But the basic design will change. Very important part of this is newsletter and subscription. I have been harping on people for a decade to do email newsletters. I've never seen anything more beneficial to selling a publication, meaning a book or magazine. I've never seen anything more effective than an email newsletter. I know that reeks of 1995, but it's absolutely true. For example, last week or the week before, there was a story that came out in a variety of major media outlets about a celebrity, a current celebrity, who has upwards of like something like 100 million followers on Instagram and was paid a pretty sizable sum to write a book, which to me is always a great thing. I love those kind of memoirs from celebrities or musicians or whoever. And the grand total of sales for the book, I think, was 64,000. So 100 million followers, huge advance, and sold 64,000 copies. If that is not what I've been saying for the last decade, I don't know what is. That these numbers on social do not always translate to success. And so a website is very different. And building that newsletter one at a time. Here's the part where I have to apologize. I had 1,250 something people that were signed up to my site for the newsletter and I never sent one. I told people to send newsletters because I have examples of other people selling books and selling photography and stuff, example after example over the years that I'd been telling people about, but I just, again, I'm not selling anything. So when it came to doing a newsletter, I'm like, I don't know what to put in it that I'm not, not already putting on the site because I'm not trying to get anything from you. So I never sent one, but 1,250 people signed up. I just deleted all of those. So if you have signed up for my site, to what's called the shifter wire, which is a reference to the wire services of old, even though some of them are still around. But wire services, I started shooting for wire services back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and it was like a really fun way to learn photography and work for a big organization. So my newsletter is called the shifter wire. I haven't sent one, but I'm going to send one. And I got to figure out what I'm going to put in it, but I'm going to send it. If you have signed up for my site in the past couple of years, I'm sorry, because I, as of this morning, you're gone. The reason I did that is because many of you are starting at ground zero and I felt like to be the most uh, transparent I could and to be on the same page with you, I needed to be at ground zero as well. So if you have signed up, you're no longer signed up and that means you have to go back to shifter.media and hit the sign up form. And I apologize, but again, I just gave you the reasoning for why I did it. I had several friends really try to talk me out of it because they were like, look, you've already built this list. I said, I don't care. Again, if I had some master plan that I was gonna take over the world with this site, then yeah, maybe I would have kept them. It's not a big deal. I kind of feel like starting over anyway, and my life is a lot different than it was prior to COVID, and so why not with a, start with a clean slate and start over? Newsletter and subscription. That's what's gonna be on there for sure. Number two is there's gonna be a print arm of a print arm of Shifter. And I think what I'm gonna do is use the print arm for the transactional aspect of the site. And when I say transactional, I mean the sales part. So I can say to people, oh, this is what I do to sell something to generate money. Now, do I envision generating a lot of money with my print arm? No, but it will help me model the mechanism of how this would work for someone else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my essay magazine, which is I've done three issues, and I used Blurb, and the only reason I built Essay was to show other photographers how to do it. Again, was I trying to sell them? No, it's the only public thing I have for sale on my site. Do not buy them, make your own. I'm gonna rebuild those in using MagCloud. And I'm gonna use probably MagCloud Digest, maybe 8x8 MagClouds. Those are two of my favorite MagCloud formats. And what I love about MagCloud is a couple of things. The products are dirt cheap, dirt cheap. Uh, a, an eight page MagCloud Digest is $1.20. And that is just insanely cheap. So if I do a 40 page MagCloud Digest, odds are the cost on that is gonna be 10 bucks. And I can turn around and sell that. But more importantly, is on the back end of the MagCloud publication process is a way for me to track the city and the country in which someone bought my publication. In addition, I get the email address. Blurb does not have that system. And that to me is a tragic flaw of the blurb system. If I'm selling a publication, I would love to know who bought it and whether or not they're interested in my new publication. And MagCloud gives me that option. I can build a little mini 
database behind the scenes of people who have, built, who have bought my publications. I have sold MagCloud publications in the past. The first thing I ever did on MagCloud was try to sell 100 copies of a magazine called The Like File. I did, it sold out in a, in a couple of days and I've turned it off and I still get people asking me for that. So I'm gonna go back and use MagCloud, but I'm gonna rebuild my current essay magazines into the new MagCloud format. And I'm also gonna design them better and edit them better. And then also the new projects that I do, like my Birds of Prey project that I've never told anyone about, that's, and it's kind of a play on words, people. That's gonna end up, all the stories I do, if I end up in this Mexico trip here in a few weeks, that'll end up as a MagCloud Digest and I'll be able to sell. So that's coming under the print arm. Number three is I'll still have a photography tab. I have to have a way of showing my work. And as of right now, the photo photography tab on Shifter is the only place my work is online. The problem is that I took stories, complete bodies of work, and edited them down to often cases to a single image. So a lot of times now my photography tab is just a scroll down of it looks like random images. Most of those images represent an entire body of work behind it, but I didn't want to put hundreds and hundreds of images up there. The only goal of the photography tab is to say, look, if you're looking for the quality level of photography that I can produce, here's an example. It's all black and white. I didn't put any color on there. I just said, look, I prefer to shoot black and white. Here it is. And I need to keep that because I get people asking, can I see your work somewhere? That's it. Number four is I'm going to start a Discord server. I mentioned earlier that my site and YouTube answering comments through WordPress and through YouTube is clunky and slow. And then if you write a comment to me and I respond back that, and then you respond back again, it doesn't pop to the top of my list. I have to dig back in and I'm missing stuff. And to me, if you're not gonna answer your comments on YouTube, why are you on YouTube? So the Discord server is where you and I can have a conversation without having to go into YouTube and into my comments on WordPress. And I'm just gonna go on there randomly and I'm gonna share stuff that I'm doing and we can have dialogues and we can have conversations and we can have that and it's much quicker, easier. It works on the phone so much better. So as soon as I have the Discord server information, I'm gonna post it. You can join the group and I'm gonna go on periodically as often as I can and respond to people and talk and share some new, share some new stuff. Number five, I'm gonna have a Patreon page where people can donate to the site. Again, this makes my, the hair on my neck stand up. And, but you can't see it, but I have like a Yeti, my whole back, it's like, like a shag carpet. No, I'm just kidding. Patreon, it's embarrassing to me, but I'm gonna do it because so many people ask me about it and so many people want to do it and I need to know how it works. What I'm gonna do with that money, I don't know if I get any, but there will be a Patreon page. I have no idea. Again, that's early days. I'm going to have it and I got to figure out what to do. Maybe I take that money and I put it towards AG23. I don't know. My about page and my contact page are going to stay. A lot of people read it. I'm going to rewrite it and add some new content, but that's going to be there. And then I'm going to take everything else I'm doing. The YouTube, so my create tab, my bike life, adventure, dispatches, Lime, all of that stuff is going to solidify under one tab. And then whatever I post, podcasts, motion, still images with copy, it's just all going to be under a main header. I don't think people are searching by categories. I think they're signing up for the site. And when the RSS feed comes every day, they're just looking at the post and going on. So I don't think people are really going to each tab. I want to clean up and simplify and just put everything under the top thing. That is where we're at with the Shifter reboot. If you have ideas, share them. Again, I'm just trying to make a roadmap for people to understand you do not have to use Facebook and Instagram. You don't. I am a living human testament to how much better life is away from those two platforms. I've said this many times before. When I deleted those, I detoxed, physically detoxed for two weeks. The second I was in between tasks, my brain would say, check Facebook, check Instagram. And I was, it kind of freaked me out when I eliminated those two and my brain would still say, check it. I'd be reaching for my phone thinking, why the hell am I reaching from, why am I doing that? Two weeks later, came out the barrel and I looked back at those platforms and I was like, whoa, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Life is way better without it. So figure out what to say. Take your time. You're building one true relationship at a time. And that's all we can do, people. Go back and use the, the internets for what they were designed for. 
And that, in a nutshell, is what I'm doing with Shifter. And um, I will be back at some point in the next few months with an update on this because it is going to evolve. And thanks again to Charlene and Fleming for uh, being part of this because I could not do it by myself. And also thanks to everyone out there who signed up and then I deleted you. That's, that's rude. There is no other explanation. Selfish, rude, misguided. Those are all the, the stars in which I, I navigate at night. So uh, again, uh, thanks for being with me and I'll be back.